Father, we thank you for the songs that have been sung, the prayers that have been prayed, the opportunity to worship you in giving. And now as we look into your word, we ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our hearts and that we will grow thereby. We thank you for all these things. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 As I said previously, this is the last Sunday of 2023, and it also happens to correspond to the last day of 2023. And there are um, a lot of people that are excited that they are going into a new year. And there are some folks that are unexcited about going into a new year. And there's a lot of folks that don't know what they are, but that the new year is coming. And so we want to take some time today because I believe that understanding history helps us to be successful in our future. And so we are going to today just kind of reflect back over 2023 and give ourselves the room to understand or the bandwidth to look at how 2023 has gotten us to where we are now. And from that point, how we can lean more on God as we go into the next year. One of the, not in my notes, but one of the things that just ran through my mind and then stopped, he stopped for a minute, so I think I'm going to go ahead and talk about it, is the fact that in the human household, the older you get, the more you are moved out of that household to start your own. But as you grow in God, what he does is bring you deeper into his household because you have gotten more uh, mature in handling the things of God. So that's another paradox of how the, the, the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of man operates. As you grow in the kingdom of man, it is like go and do your own thing. As you grow in the kingdom of God, he says, come closer and know more of me so that you can touch more people. That was for free, uh, but if you want to give me a little something, something for it, I'll, I'll take it. Anyway, <laughs> our, opening, our opening thought today is this. God has given his people the joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for and through us. A chance to celebrate to give thanks, and to teach our children. A chance to celebrate, give thanks, and to teach our children. So let's jump into our definitions. Our first definition is hindsight, which is the subject of today's message, hindsight. Hindsight is the perception of the nature of an event after it has happened. Hindsight is the perception of the nature of an event after it has happened. We have a saying that hindsight is 2020, but y'all know perfect vision is not 2020. But I, I won't, I'm not gonna go down that street right now. The next, the next definition is grace. Grace is the free, unmerited love and favor of God, the spring and source of all the benefits men receive from him. I like to say that one more time because it made me feel good. Grace is the free, unmerited love and favor of God, the spring and source of all the benefits men receive from him. I want us to take this journey today and reflect over 2023 and look at how 2023 has affected us. But in the midst of the effect of 2023, I want us to also see now how God's hand was in all of it. Because if we can acknowledge him in all our ways, then guess what he'll do? He'll direct our path. 
That sounds like Bible to me. And if you go and do it in the way that even when you are at the lowest low, if you can acknowledge that this is the Lord's doing, that you can realize that if he's put you through it, he put you in it, he's brought you to it, then he's got something on the other side for you. And so every once in a while we need to step back and, and look over how we've gotten to where we are so that we can be more motivated to go forward. Now, I know some of us have, have done our New Year's resolution or will use this upcoming week to establish our re resolution. This is what I resolve to do in 2024. And most of the time is exercise more. Most of the time is lose weight. Most of the time is uh, go to bed earlier. You know, we all have these res resolutions that we make. And I have discovered through personal study that most of the time when we make a resolution that the, 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 the stability of that resolution is only motivated by how important that item really is to us. For instance, if you say, I'm not going to drink soft drinks anymore and you go out to eat and your habit as going out to eat is to drink a soft drink and you order the soft drink and what you do is you say well since I got it I'll go ahead and drink it. So it has to be something that we feel strongly about in order to make the change that we want to make. I'm going off that alley now. Let's look in Deuteronomy the 11th chapter starting at verse number one. And this is what Moses had to tell them, their peoples. <laughs> Moses told them, he said in verse number one through verse number seven, you, this is the English standard version. You shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes his rules, and his commandments when you feel like it. No, it says always. And consider today, since I'm not speaking to your children who have not known or seen it, consider the discipline of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm, his signs and his deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and to all his land. And what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord has destroyed them to this day, and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abram and the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened his mouth and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and everything that followed them in the midst of all Israel. For your eyes have seen all the great work of the Lord that he did. Now drop down to verse number 18 real quick. He says, you shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children. Talking of them when you are sitting in your house and when you're walking by the way and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens are above the earth. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word and the hearers. And I forgot to start my timer, so I don't know how much longer I'm going to go. All right. <laughs> Maybe about an hour. All right. Don't make no faces. All right. So as, we, as we're looking at, 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 at what's going on, Moses is telling the people that God has done so many great things for us. He has done wondrous things. He's freed us from bondage. He has 
kept us in the wilderness. He's done all these things. And even when we had people cutting up in the midst of our organization, God came in and moved them out the way. And then he says, do not forget to let this be known to your children. And in order for you to not let your children forget, you have to remember. And you have to tell them this is why we do things the way that we do. Y'all know my, my, my favorite story about this, about the young lady that was getting ready to cook the ham. And as she was getting ready to cook the ham, her mother and her mother's mother was sitting there. And she, as she was cutting off the end of the ham, she looked over at her mother and she says, hey, mom. Why do we cut off the end of the, the ham? And the mother looked at her mother and she says, you know what? I don't know. Mama, why do we cut off the end of the ham? And the mother says, well, I don't know why you two are doing it. The grandmother says, I don't know why you two are doing it. But I had to cut the end of the ham off because my pan was too small. <laughs> and so sometimes we do things by what we see and it is not the most beneficial thing. And what we want to do is we want to look over 2023 and say, this is the benefit that I can extrapolate from this, that God is always there. And God is always with me. And God has set me up for success, even though I didn't want to be successful. I was all right where I was, However, God had another plan for me. And to be able to articulate that to your children then becomes the thing. But in order for you to articulate it to your children, you must first what? Recognize it. Come up with your teaching plan so that you can use it as a teachable moment for the next generation. There have been many years that... Families have been in darkness about certain aspects of their family life. Why? Because that's something we don't talk about. That's something we don't mention. That happened in this house and it don't go nowhere else. And as we have done these things, we have created a bondage in our generations, in our legacy, in our families, because we don't talk about it and if we don't talk about it that means it can't be dealt with and if it can't be dealt with it continues to grow I've asked uh, I sent out a, a text uh, asked the team to send out a text message and asked are there any topics that y'all would love for me to 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 uh, look into this year and one of the topics came out was generational curses now I'm going to say this because it needs to be said. I don't believe in generational curses per se. What I do believe in is generational ignorance. Generational ignorance causes your family to fall into the same situations that you fell into. Why? Because they didn't know. And because they didn't know, they repeated this, the same whatever it is over and over and over again. Because if we are able to teach our children the history, I know this kind of went a little different, but because if we're able to teach our children this is what our family has a propensity for doing, we make them aware of that, then when it comes up, they know how to deal with it, and then they can move on in a different direction. That was free also, but if you want to provide a contribution, I'll take it. And so we want to look at how we are going to review 2023. Well, in 2023, we as a church, we took on the responsibility of helping a orphanage in Uganda, yes. and we have been able to bless them because of your faithful giving. That is our overseas mission. In our local mission, we have helped a local uh, uh, veterans group who helps veterans to become unhomeless, if that can be a word, 
uh, unhomeless so that they can have a place to stay and provide them with the benefits that's due them. So we support that organization also. And we also assist with different events that are going on in the community. We make sure that we're there if possible so that we can support what's going on in the local community. That's some of the things that we have done as a congregation in order to be a blessing to God's people in the community and abroad. Now, this comes to the part where you got to look in the mirror and you have to look at what you've done in 2023 and what high situation that you have had in 2023. We all, we, it's easy for us to find the high points and for some of us it's even easier for us to find the low point but after you find these different points, your high point and your low point of 2023, what I want you to do is kind of step back just a little bit from what you were going through and look at the situation and, and see the hand of God in the midst of that situation. I want you to step back and realize that in the midst of that, and this is the importance of hindsight. Hindsight means that I'm looking back over what has already occurred and I'm extrapolating information to help me to go in my new direction. And that way then I'm informed if a 2024, if the same situation occurs, I can say God did it for me before, the same type of thing, and now he's maturing me to another level in this type of situation. Because if we do not learn from how God has kept us and it causes us to increase our faith, guess what happens? It's that generational ignorance. You don't know, so then you go through the same pity party that you did before. And if you go through the same pity party, then that means you're not growing. We want to grow and to become all that God has called for us to be. We should be able to look at 2022 and say, I am more because of what I've learned in 2022 and 2023. And as I'm looking at 2023, now I can see where I've grown, where I didn't get angry as quickly. I didn't slap people like I used to. I didn't punch people. I didn't do the things because I have grown, because God has, and, and because I have grown, now I can go on and teach others how they can grow. Now, I know Moses was talking about children, but it doesn't necessarily have to be children. Your, your birth children, it can be people that you encounter, that you teach them how that they can trust in the Lord and that he will be a deliverer to them. That he will keep them in all things. And we know that the year... Uh, 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 reviewing your year is always something. You hear, the, you know, like... All, all this upcoming week, this past week, you've heard TV shows such and such, year in review, such and such, year in review. Everybody's doing this review, but we as children of the Most High God should be pulling something out of our review that equips us in order to go forward even stronger, to be a brighter beacon, to be an even greater, greater, greater witness for him and folks that we encounter. Why? It's because we have to know that God is with us no matter what we are going through. Even if it's because of something that we've done wrong, when we ask for forgiveness, he brings in the grace to help us to have favor uh, under those that are uh, accusing us so that it does not become as harsh as it could have been. Why? It's because that is how God helps us to mature. How he helps us to become what he wants us to become. And with that being said... 
I want you to just take a moment and just run through your mind and, and just think about what comes to your mind about this past year that really, really stands out at this moment. It doesn't have to be a really big thing to anybody else except for you. But just think about that, that moment and how, if it was really a good thing, how happy you were, if it was a really bad thing, how sad you were. But then again, I want you to kind of step back and look at how now, how you can see God was leading you, how God was keeping you. In the midst of you being so frustrated, God kept you. In the midst of you being so elated, God kept you. Why? Because as we said in our definition that grace is this unmerited love and favor of God. That he extends towards us. What? What can we do to earn his grace? Nothing. What can we do to, to earn his favor? Nothing. It is given to us without condition. And because of this, we can worship and we can magnify him because we know that his grace is sufficient for our moment and what we need. So I wanted to end this year by just saying, be encouraged. Yes, we had some bumps in the road. Some of us may have even hit not, not just a pothole, but a sinkhole in the road. I mean, the whole front end of the car went down. But, but then someone came along and helped us, and somebody that we never thought would help us came along and helped us. And now we know that no matter what we go through, God is with us. And if he's with us, guess what? It's like that big, it's like that big brother that's standing behind you when you're getting ready to fight somebody. They're not going to fight you because they keep looking at your big brother because they're like, no, I don't want that joker to get involved. And that is how God operates. He shows up and he shows that he is on your side. And when he's on your side, that you can do things that you never thought possible because you know he's got your back. And when God's got your back, your back is God. All right? So be excited about 2023. Some of us could maybe look back and say, 2023, I'm so glad you gone. And some of y'all could probably say, 2023, please don't leave. It was just such a good year. But the thing I want us to remember, in hindsight, when we look back over it, where do we see God operating, moving, maneuvering, and, 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 and helping us to become more like him and being more of his children, how we're touching other people's lives, how we're exampling, how we're speaking into other people's lives, how we're helping them along the way, that we're talking to them uh, when we're sitting down, we're talking to them when we're standing up, we're telling them and encouraging them along the way because God is with us. And now as we get ready to close, our opening thought was this. God has given the, his people the joyful task of actively remembering what he has done for and through us. A chance to celebrate, a chance to give thanks, and a chance to teach our children. Thank you, and our final thought is this. We have been changed in the past year by God's grace. In both challenging and joyful ways. Remembering these things will empower us to move into the future. Remembering these things will empower us to move into the future. Looking back and remembering so that we can have that extra motivation to go in the new direction that God is leading us and trusting him that he has this already mapped out, laid out, prepared for us, 
And it's in all these situations that he's able to show himself strong on our behalf that he may be glorified in all things. And then that we may be a blessing to others through words of encouragement of how God has done what he's done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if you have gone through this year without acknowledging Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then, then we have a little complication that we need to rectify. The key to all of the, the benefits that God has for us is having a relationship with him. In order for us to achieve the relationship with him, we need to acknowledge that he has given us a gift. And that gift is his son, Jesus. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you have not accepted the gift of Jesus Christ in your life, then what we need for you to do is go through this process that God has set up for us. And it's not a difficult thing. The Bible starts off with this very simple uh, process uh, point, And it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this save means to be rescued, to be delivered from the penalty of sin. And this is what God has for you, for that you will have eternal life with him. Thank you, Lord. Now... This is not an individual event. We tell you that this is a team sport. And we do not want you to feel like after you have made this decision that you're all by yourself. We want to come alongside you and assist you along this journey. So you contact us. Let us know that you've made this decision either by email at info at godshousecc.com or you can text us at 864 864- Nine two zero zero one zero zero. Let us know that you've made this decision. We're going to come alongside you. It don't matter where you are in the world. We want to come alongside you and assist you along this journey. Why? Because you are very important to God, which makes you very important to us. Well, friends and family, we all need hindsight so that we can know what we've gone through. And as we get ready to go into a brand new year, for those of you that are going to be uh, celebrating tonight, staying up till midnight just to watch it stay dark, uh, whatever you want to do, you can do that. I'm sorry. I, I, shouldn't have made it, I shouldn't have made that joke. But anyway, so do what it is. But the, the biggest point that I want to leave with you today is that we should be able to reflect upon the blessings of God from our past in order to help us in our present and to propel us into the future that he has for us. Next week, we're going to be starting off a new series called Refocus, and we're going to be talking about the things that we should be focusing on. And I think that's going to be a wonderful way to start off the new year. And with that being said, I'll see you in 2024, either here at 642 Fairview Road in Simpsonville, South Carolina, or on Facebook. Whichever way I see you, I'll see you when I see you. And that's when I see you. Until next time, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name.